Maintaining healthy functional hips is so important. Not only is stiffness and inflexibility in this region a major contributor to low back problems, but it gets in the way of doing many of the things that people do on a daily basis. The problem is that many traditional hip mobility exercises require you to get down onto the floor or into these awkward, uncomfortable positions that not everyone can get into. And even if you can get into those positions, many of those movements lack the load that's needed to open up the robust tissues around these big hip joints. Well, today we're solving for both of those problems. I'm going to show you an exercise that anyone can use to effectively open up their hips. Let's get into this. Welcome back to the jungle, everyone. It's a gorgeous morning here, and the weather is absolutely perfect for doing some mobility exercises. Now, the movement that we're focused on today is called crosswalks, and to perform them, you're gonna start off with a hip-width stance, your feet are gonna be pointing straight ahead, and then you're gonna put a very slight bend in your knees, just like three degrees. You wanna make sure that you're light on the balls of your feet so that you can move easily, and this exercise does require just a little bit of athleticism. We wanna make sure that you're not stiff like a robot with all your joints locked out here. So light on the balls of the feet, that hip width stance. And then from here, you're going to take all the weight off of your left leg and you're going to step behind your right leg like that, reaching across, landing on the ball of the foot. And then from here, you're going to add weight back onto that left leg and step across. Again, slight bend in the knees, feet pointed straight ahead, step across, landing on the ball of the foot, step through. Just look at how many individual movements are baked into this one exercise. You've got hip flexion, knee flexion, ankle dorsiflexion, hip external rotation, adduction and extension, stepping through. Again, bend, cross, stepping through. There's even spinal rotation in there if you allow it to happen. Bend, cross, through. Bend, cross, through. Crosswalks are a fantastic exercise and I love them for so many reasons. But one of the best things about this exercise is how easy it is to modify it for different skill levels and different levels of flexibility. So for somebody who is really stiff in their hips and pelvis, I might have them start off in that same position, hip width, feet pointed straight ahead, light on the balls of the feet, but they might only step through this far and come across. And you know what? That's fine. They're still getting all of the same motions hip adduction, external rotation, and extension, they're just getting a smaller amount of it. And then what you would do is work on that movement and try and slowly increase how far you're stepping as you get more comfortable with the motion. Just like that. And then when you get really good at it, you can take a very deep stance where your hip width, light on the balls of the feet, step way across, now I'm loaded in external rotation and hip extension, opening up the hip flexors and the abductors and through. Bend, deep step and across. Deep step and across, just like that. So you can make this exercise as easy or as hard as you need it to be for you. Once you determine what range of motion is most comfortable and feels best for you, what I recommend is performing 10 to 15 repetitions or 10 to 15 steps in each direction every single day. Now, if you've got the space for it, it's super helpful if you can perform all the repetitions for one side before moving back in the opposite direction. And the reason for this is that as you go through those steps, your hips are going to begin to warm up. You're going to be secreting synovial fluid. And you might find that by that 10th repetition or so, you can go just a little bit further into your range of motion and your hips move a little easier than they did at the beginning of the session. As the days and weeks go by, you're going to build on this until you get to the point where you can step 15, 20, maybe 30% further than you could starting out. But that's the name of the game. Slowly improving range of motion and functionality at the hips while building strength and flexibility. One final thing that I should mention is that if anyone struggles with this movement or has balance issues, then it can be super helpful to break the movement down into parts and perform it while hanging on to something like the back of a sturdy chair or a walking stick. So in a case like this, I would have somebody put both hands on the walking stick, use that same starting position, hip width, light on the balls of the feet, step across and return to start. 
step across and return to start. You're still practicing offloading that leg and shifting your weight in a coordinated fashion. You're still externally rotating, adducting and extending the hip, getting all those same benefits, but you're way more stable. And this might allow somebody to even go a little bit further into that step than they otherwise would. As you get more comfortable, you can go to one hand here, just like that. And then hopefully you would work up to the point where you don't need the stick or that external support at all. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more easy to do compound mobility exercises, then hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below letting me know what region of the body you'd most like to see. Guys, that's all for this week. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button before you head out of here and I'll see you next time.